Hello and welcome. I'm Enigmas, and this is episode 23 of the Ultimate Feed the Beast Reloaded. Today, yet another derail. Only this time, it was the good kind. It was the, hey, I didn't even really think that was possible. Let's do it now and save ourselves a bunch of time down the line. This one's actually courtesy of a couple of viewers who watched the last video and pointed out that you can get turtles to automatically enchant things for you, gather up experience and enchant things for you. And I thought, really? Well, that's going to save me a bundle of time and dorking around trying to come up with all the enchants that I need for the Mega Turtles Arcane Boars. And it was so cool the way it worked out. In the end, I decided that I had to show you guys exactly how this works. In addition, I have a paste bin link for you in the information section under the video so that you can view the code that I wrote to handle these guys. It's very, very short. It's very, very simple, which is why it's such a great candidate for you guys to look over if you want to get into this kind of thing, because it's easy to go through line by line and sort out exactly what's going on. And sometimes that's the best way to learn. In addition, I will also have the little string that you can copy and paste into your turtle to have it automatically download those routines into the turtle so that you can run it without having to do a bunch of typing and just copying, which is mundane and uh, a silly task. So there you go. That'll be in the information section below the video. But first, let's just take a look at what we've got. Now, I've shut this whole thing down. I've shut off the pistons. I've shut off the mob spawner because otherwise there's just too much crap going on and it's hard for me to concentrate, much less all you guys trying to watch this with stuff and the golems fighting and all that other stuff. So, going down here now, if you saw the last video, you know this used to be all brains in jars, and now I've replaced the lower row with experience enchanting turtles. Now, these guys are a little bit on the pricey side to make. You make a turtle, which is not expensive, and then you make an enchanting table, which is two diamonds. Little, eh... And then you combine the turtle and the enchanting table on a crafting grid, and this is what you get. You get the enchanting turtle uh, multiplied by 22. That's why I'm saying it was a little bit pricey to set up. But it's I've got another quarry going specifically because I, I knew I was running low on diamonds anyways. So I used up almost all my diamonds making all these guys, but I'll have more coming in any time now. So it's not a thing. Now the brains are getting a little bit impatient with me, so i just give you a brief overview of this setup. Under every turtle is a relay. You can see, probably this is the best view I can give you. There's a relay and there's a turtle sitting on top of it. So that after the turtle enchants a book, it drops it into the inventory below it, what ha which happens to be the relay. And the relay, of course, automatically dispense, dispenses the items into the pneumatic tubes. So a very, very simple and straightforward way of gathering up all the books after the turtles have done with them. In addition, you can see I've got a chest in front of every turtle. This is a little bit of overkill, but a bunch of wood chests and a few gold ones to keep them from merging was actually, to me, the simplest way of setting this up so that I could feed the turtles books fairly quickly and easily. So if I've got a bunch of books from a trip to, you know, abandoned libraries or whatever, I can just run around here and sort of distribute them amongst the chests. If I want to set up some automated system to send them to the chest, that's fine. And the turtles will take what they need as they need it, pretty much. Then we've got the brains in jars sitting on top of the turtles. The only reason these guys are here is because they were left over from before. And I figured, worst case scenario, a skeleton dies a little higher up than normal. Something happens, one of these brains in jars gets an experience orb. Hooray. Or... It if I forget to supply the books into the chests and the turtles run out of books to enchant with or something else goes wrong, the turtles can't absorb any more experience, these guys can sort of help out, step in. Although I think, I would suspect the turtles have a pretty high limit on how much experience they can absorb. So, I didn't make the brains in jars and put them here specifically for this plan with the turtles. It's just they were already there, so I decided to leave them. And based on that, I included a command in the turtle script that will actually allow each turtle to grab experience from the brains and jars directly above them. So when you see me explaining that, you know why. It's it's not a thing. It's, it's not a big deal. And then all that's really left to do is take a look at the script itself. Now I stopped this guy specifically so that I can show you. It's not particularly complicated. I'm going to go through this very, very quickly because if you're not into LUA, it's going to be all Greek to you. And if you are into it, 
you'll be better served going through the paste bin link anyway. So we've got the peripheral wrap right, which connects the turtle to the <laughs> enchanting table the turtle is carrying. Uh, that, I found that really, really difficult to track down exactly how the command works and how to use the enchanting turtle functions because all of the other references I saw to peripheral wrap were, for example, getting the turtle in the example to communicate with a computer or another turtle and not necessarily with the item that it was, you know, using. It's mining pick, it's enchanting table, whatever. So I got it sorted out, got everything working, and then we get the set auto collect true, which is one of the enchanting turtle functions. It allows the turtle to automatically grab experience orbs that are near it. Um, it won't grab them from a very far distance, but it it's just basically automates the process. If you don't use the set auto collect function or method, depending on what you want to call it, you have to give it an explicit command to gather what's around it, which is it's added hassle. I figured why even bother. So then we go into the permanent loop because these guys, their job is literally to sit here to gather experience when they hit level 30, enchant a book, and then start the process all over again. So this loop, this while true do, uh, has no conditions that will allow it to stop. If I want to stop the script, I have to hold control T to break out of the, the, the script. So it's not a big deal, but that's what the while true do is doing. And then it's checking to see if it's at or above level 30. And if it is, then it starts going into the whole routine to enchant a book. It's going to check and see if it's got any books in slot one in its inventory. And if it doesn't, then it's going to grab from the chest in front of it, which will only be books because that's all I'm going to put in those chests. Then it goes on to select slot one. It transfers one book off the stack into slot two, selects slot two, Enchants it with a level 30 enchant. This is what this 30 represents is the level of the enchant Then it selects slot 2 again. That's just me being redundant. Um, it's something that I learned a long time ago um, It's not efficient. It's something if you were doing an optimization pass you would take out later, but it just helps keep keep things explicit and on track so it's enchanted the book, it's double checked to make sure it's still on slot 2, and then it's dropped the book into the inventory directly below it. That's what Turtle Drop Down is doing. And then through it all, if it wasn't at or above level 30, that's when it outputs the level that it's currently at, uses the m.getup command to give the jar above it a little rattle in case there's any experience in there, and then it waits for a little while and goes back up to the top and does the check again to see if it's got enough experience to enchant a book. That's it. That's the whole thing. I'm proud to say I wrote it by myself after having not done any kind of procedural programming in probably longer than some of you have been alive. But it was cool. It was a nice little way to break into LUA with computer craft and a turtle. It's a hell of a lot better system for managing the experience and the enchanting and all that other stuff and overall it was just a great suggestion it, like I say I was happy to invest the time in this particular upgrade so that now I can move on to other things and that's what we're gonna do momentarily but I just want to show you this little row of chests here is uh, my enchanting book storage and this is what my turtles have provided me with so far just running for a little while I was off doing other things I left the game running I came back, this is what I've got. Uh, I've got a charging and a potency, so that's one extra wand of excavation, possibly. I've got a bunch of crap that I don't really care about. Um, but it beats the hell out of having to go around manually knocking on these jars, and every time I hit level 30, fly up there, enchant a book, come back, knock on more jars, etc, etc, until all the jars are empty, and then let things carry on. So with that done, we're going to turn this guy back on and we are going to head off and take a look at the new engine module for the turtle. It's actually going to be a paired module. It's going to be a little bit different from the first one that we did, which is uh, just fine by me. And it also happens to be in our creative world. So I'm going to switch over and I'll see you guys there. All right. So here we are in the creative test world. I started making a mess here too. <laughs> I got the silver wood and I had, that was like, 
I don't know if there were like little V comets flying all over the place between the different nodes and lightning and wisps and oh it was great fun but that's not what we're here for we're here to look at this new engine module that's going to replace the first iteration for those of you who maybe missed it oh wow I, I kind of mutilated it in the process of testing some things but this was the first iteration this was the bottom module this was the top module and then I added something to test and see if you can move a crystal core on frames which you can which is nice because there's no other way to move them without breaking them and then having to rebuild them. And apparently you get your nether star back every time. Um, doesn't matter. It was, it was just a test. So if we were to chop this wart off, this would be the top module. The whole idea, twin chunk loaders so that when one module is moving, the other one is stationary, the chunk loader still works. And then vice versa, the caterpillar back and forth so that things can move without chunks unloading and causing problems. So that's what we're going to keep going with this concept over here. But as you can see already, this is it. If I just kind of exclude all the other crap. This is the build. This is literally the motor unit for the horizontal axis. And then we're going to be adding on our vertical axis module or variant of it. You remember this. Really, really simple and straightforward. You can attach this to anything to make it move up and down over here I wanted something a little bit more compact a little bit more slick a little bit more elegant one of the things that I found especially when working with frames is that I'll get an idea in my head of how I want it to work and then I spend so much focus on figuring out how to make it work there's a little chink in the armor there's a little bit of a flaw in the design that completely eludes me until I'm done and then I can look back and say well if I was gonna do that different there's definitely some things that I would keep in mind. So in this case, because we had to vastly change the design overall for the Mega Turtle, I took advantage of that, and this is what results. Now, this is basically the bottom section is the power plant, and then the top section is the drive unit. And I've set it up like I did before, block for block, so that you can see how it comes together, which is very simply a 3x3 three three little L-shaped or V-shaped section of redstone tube frame looks like that once you've got the support pieces broken off that I just kind of built temporarily I showed you that before and we come over here we put a regular frame in the middle and then we put in our ender chest filter retriever combination so the input side of the retriever this yellow side is facing the tube frame outputs into the ender chest the input side of the filters to the ender chest outputs into the tube frame and set up so that the retriever pulls empty blue electric batteries from battery boxes and the filter pulls full blue electric batteries from the ender chest. Right? Nothing complicated. I've shown you this like four or five times, that basic concept, just on this build alone. And then over here, we've taken and we've covered everything, including the filter and the ender chest, with blue electric battery boxes. And then we've taken these four pieces of just regular support frames connected them to the lower section with this piece and then three across and that's to keep these two battery boxes connected to the overall structure so we even though when we first put these guys on they weren't connected we made sure that they were connected before we walked away from the whole thing and then over here once again we've got a wireless receiver on panels and a hollow panel here with the alloy wire and then the jacketed cable so we've got receiver, alloy wire, cable, cable, connecting a signal, whatever comes from this wireless receiver, to our redstone tube frames so that we can manage the retriever and the filter remotely. Basically the exact same thing as we did with the last build, only a little bit more compact and a little bit more elegant. Now this is where it gets um, interesting because this is probably the most compact motor unit that I've ever built and had any faith in because I've made some pretty crazy, crazy motor units. Uh, first thing is it's an X shape of individual redstone tube frames. I just want to point that out from underneath and then up top you can see as well. The plus shape guys are just regular support frames and then the X shape are the redstone tube frames. And the redstone tube frames are what are being, or what are going to be used to transmit the signal to the set motors and the drive motors 
to make them work. So the four corners are for the set motors, and this this one here is for the drive motor because basically any drive motor that gets pushed is going to be pushing off this frame here in order to make the structure move. Now to give you kind of an example, we've got these guys here. These are the drive motors. And I set this up specifically this way so that you could see how everything is going together because we put the covers on here. And that was kind of important as I want to be able to show the covers. But also, if you set it up like this first with um, the drive motors in place before you put the corner ones on, then you can see the sides of the motors at least to make sure that they're facing the proper direction, which in this case, they should all be facing in towards the middle and we can tell by the slope here and on the the vanilla minecraft version it's more like a dial here that's still it's still sloped but it's basically the same thing so we know that this guy is ready to go all facing in towards the middle and then these guys the the drive motors are right side up you can see that right the drive face is up there and then the bottom is here you can tell by the vent these ones are on their sides, which means we can come down here again and see what direction they're facing. And we want to go around through the corners and make sure that the drive motor is being pushed into the middle by the set motor. So then we come around here, same thing. This motor is facing that direction, so it's gonna push this guy into the middle. Come around, same thing. So all the set motors are pushing their corresponding drive motors into the middle where they will encounter the redstone signal coming through this tube frame and push this thing in the direction that it's supposed to go. And then the last step, really, before we were to add on any kind of uh, vertical module or anything else, is I put a couple of frames here like this, and these would basically, this frame would connect to that one, and that would make the finished unit. I was actually going to have one assembled that I could show you guys today, but turtles. So I was a little bit short on time, but you can see basically how it's going to work out is not counting this little strip of wiring and stuff on this side. It's going to be a four high unit by four wide by three deep if you're looking at it from this side. So four by four by three without the vertical module and then the vertical module is going to add not a lot. So fairly compact. That's going to be duplicated in the build so there's going to be two of those overall modules so the thing with these is this guy on top of this guy with the vertical module moves in all directions by itself it doesn't have to push off of another module it doesn't have to do anything it's a self-contained inchworm drive and that's very much sort of the traditional layout for inchworm drives is they're self-contained they aren't two modules pushing off one another then there will be another unit in the mega turtle that is identical to this that serves as the stationary unit while this one is moving and then while this one is stationary the other one catches up. So rather than having this really sort of very large structure that's kind of awkward and a little bit gaudy, we're compressing them down so that they're much easier to work with and also much easier to manage once we've got everything up and running. So the next episode we're going to have these guys in place, we're going to have the motor unit done, we're going to start building on the structural components we're going to talk about how many bores we're going to be using what kind of settings we're going to be using whether we're going to need those potency and chance and all the other stuff that we can do and before i leave you i just wanted to show you this is actually where we're going to be building the mega turtle now i chose a new miscraft age because as someone pointed out wastelands the wasteland biomes don't have any nodes, they don't have any aura nodes. So it's kind of like a third of the world I had originally planned to use for the Mega Turtle would it have no, no aura nodes, which is just not cool when we need those nodes to draw V from in order to power the boars. So we had to make some adjustments, make a new world so that the turtle can go anywhere once it's in this world. And uh, the jungle biome, amongst others, is actually supposed to have some very potentially large nodes. So this is where we're going to be next episode. I don't know how much tree carving I'm going to have to do to create a workspace for us. But uh, finally, in the next episode, if you tune in, you will see 
the first signs of progress on an actual structure for the Mega Turtle since we started this mini series. So I hope you're enjoying the series. I hope the turtle information is useful to you. Once again, remind you that the information is in the information section below the video for the paste bin link and also the line of text you can copy and paste into your turtle to download it directly from Pastebin. If you want to be notified when the next episode is added, the easiest way to do that is to make sure you subscribe to my channel. So thanks for watching guys and take care.